passive versus active main character? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Oh, okay, passive versus... This is an opportunity situation because most people assume and most movies are about somebody who's active and they got to do something. Um, but there are successful pictures where you have someone who is not. And how do those work? That's, that's what you look for. You say, well, everybody says do this and this one doesn't, but it still works. So why? What did they do that, that compensated for it? Because obviously if you have an active main character, it's easy to watch. You're going to see whether they get what they want or not. And it's all taken care of. But what about that? Well, what you'll see is um, uh, there still has to be conflict. As long as there's conflict, you'll be okay. Uh, because the conflict will, will create the suspense and the tension that sustains us. If you're using dramatic tension as a main tool. Um, not all movies do. There are like ensemble pieces that will be following a bunch of different stories of different characters and the unifying element is a milieu, like diner. It's about a diner. It's what happens in a diner. Um, and as long as it's understood by the audience that that's what they're watching, you know, you can signal that that's what it's about. In fact, that movie was a 1982 picture. <coughs> um, I believe the opening title is like a week before Christmas 1959 or something like that. Maybe 1958. And then it, it's about the Baltimore Colts and all this stuff. But it gives you a sense right away from the opening. It's going to take place in about a week. Okay, I think it actually starts Christmas Eve. And it's going to it takes place in a week. Okay, so that frames it. And then you have an ensemble uh, people. And there, there's dramatic conflicts within those. But the overall picture doesn't have doesn't utilize dramatic tension as, a, as the main tool. So you don't have that. You have first acts of all the different characters and the different subplots. And each subplot has its own act structure. Um, generally, there are a couple that kind of dangle off and disappear, but most of them, the main ones do. Um, but if we go back to the main, the most common form, which is character with an objective and there's obstacles, an active one helps. But uh, there was... A, a famous editor I was told about, and I don't remember who it was, who said the, the secret to the craft is that all scenes are either chases or escapes. It's either somebody trying to get something or trying to avoid something. And a passive character can be somebody who's just trying to avoid something. And the key is to build a circumstance where that's hard. Like uh, the uh, Lars and the Real Girl talked about that. Uh, this is a movie where the, you have a passive main character. He just wants to, all he wants to do is, is an escape story because the whole town is united to try to not let him do what he wants to do by the very indirect means, playing along with him. But you can see the tension is there as it surrounds the question is, is he ever going to get better? Um, so there, that would be a passive main character or I like Cuckoo's Nest. What does this guy want to do? He wants to avoid doing work. <laughs> he wants to play cards. He doesn't have any agenda beyond that. But the way the story is constructed, he's placed in the worst possible situation for his unique characteristics, which is that he's, he's a noble person who wants to help people, uh, you know, but he has an opportunity. He's, and, and this world crushes him. So that, that's something you can look for. Um, where is the other? graduate, I think. Sorry. The graduate that. is right. He doesn't have to pursue her. I do have an analysis of the graduate in the book. Um, he doesn't have to pursue her. She's in his lap. There's nothing there. But it, it, what keeps us suspended there is, is actually that's not an escape movie. It's dramatic irony. <laughs> you look at the middle part of that. It's an example of a movie where the second act is actually not that long. It's about equal size with the first and third acts. The second act is about will he get caught. And you, you have comic, ir comic irony played with, where and, and sometimes dramatic irony, where... The mother inquires, where do you go every night? He, you know, he cuts himself while shaving. You can see he's not comfortable answering. Oh, I just drive. Or <clears throat> in the hotel where everybody recognizes him. He's with the girl and, and uh, the Catherine Ross, the actress. She's with Is Elaine. Her, oh, uh, yeah. And, and at the hotel where he's been having these liaisons and everybody knows him. <laughs> and he's trying to conceal from her what, what, what was happening. So that's one. Um, the uh, Sunset Boulevard is a, a movie about a, a guy who's trying to hustle this uh, older woman. Uh, he's a writer. He's trying to hustle her. And after a certain point, 
really from the mid middle of the movie on, he's he's very passive. He's he's just it's kind of avoiding the world. So, but that's it's an escape in that way. He's trying to just stay away from everything, and the world intrudes. But largely, that one is sustained by um, a little bit of tension about someone trying to not let him escape, uh, and voiceover narration, which keeps us. It's a form of telegraphing. You know, this is about to happen, or little did I know this would happen. That kind of thing, so that we're anticipating. Um, so that's that. So the answer to the question: Can you have a passive main character? We'll look for where the conflicts are. If the character is passive, never wants to do anything, can you put them in a situation that challenges that and makes them uh, fight? <laughs>